This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at the loft tool. Now, the loft tool generates a surface based upon a series of similar curves. To demonstrate this tool, we're going to build a burlap sack. So I first need to draw numerous curves just to represent the shape of that sack. I'm going to start by switching to the orthographic top view and draw my first curve. And we'll use the CV curve tool. And I'll start to lay out a series of points here. This is just going to represent the top of that burlap sack. And we're kind of going for a wrinkled effect that we'll see as if the sack was tied with a rope. So here's my first curve. Not too happy about the shape, so I'm going to go in and just push and pull some of my control vertices around to shape it up a little bit better. Get a few more wrinkles in there. Okay. So we have something like that. Looks pretty decent. And now I'm going to select the curve, and I want to close that curve. So I'll choose Edit Curves, Open Close Curves, and I'll open the Tool Options. And I want to make sure that I'm blending those curves together. If I choose Preserve, it's going to keep a hard point right there where it makes that connection. And of course, so will Ignore. So I'm going to choose Blend so that I get a nice soft blending between there. Choose Open Close, and there we go. And that kind of pulled it down a little bit too far, so I'll just pull that out a bit. All right, so I have my first curve. And I'll duplicate that. I'm just going to use Control-D on the keyboard. And that duplicates my curve. And we'll bring that down. My manipulator's a little large there, so I'm just going to hit the minus button on the keyboard to decrease its size. And let's scale that curve. This would be kind of representative of where the rope might be tied. I know it's a little bit hard to envision just yet. We'll set that scale to 0.5. And I'm going to select the top curve again, duplicate it, and let's drag it down couple of units. We'll bring that down. And let's check that out. Okay, that looks good. And let's duplicate that curve. And I'm going to bring that down two units. And this curve I want to change the shape of. We'll switch to component mode and I'll go to my orthographic top view again and just quickly move through these and I'm going to use my arrow keys to do a pick walk through the curve and I'm just pressing the down arrow key just so that I can go through these points quickly and I can use the up arrow key to take me back if I see a point that needs to be adjusted previously and I'm going down and we're just trying to shape this up so that we have a more rounded curve. All right, that looks good. Hit F8 again to return me back to my object mode. And we'll scale that just slightly. And I think I'm going to go back to and scale that curve there down just a little bit. A little bit better shape there. Okay, now I'll take my rounded curve. Let's duplicate it. And we'll bring it down two more units. Scale that up. Duplicate it again. And I'll just drag that down one unit. And we'll start to cap off the bottom here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to bring that down a little bit further. And then we'll duplicate our last curve. And I'll scale this way down. Okay, so we have our series of curves. Let's turn that grid off so we can see it a little bit better. 
we have our series of curves. Here is the top of the sack, and there would be the bottom of the sack. All right, and now I'm ready to perform the loft. Now, in order to do the loft properly, we have to select the curves in order. Now, it doesn't matter if we start at the top or the bottom necessarily, but we do want to make sure that we don't skip a curve and then come back to it. The surface will follow our selection order, so that'll really screw things up. So we want to go in order, and typically we should go from top to bottom, but again, we could go from bottom to top. That will change the surface direction of the nerve's surface, but it will not affect the outcome of the surface. So we would just select all of those in order, just like that. And we could go through and actually pick them. But what is much easier is make sure that we don't have any of the curves selected. And we can just do a marquee selection around them all like that. And that will actually select them in the order of the marquee. So you can see that that last curve was selected last. And now with them selected properly, I'll choose surfaces and let's open the loft tool. I'm going to reset my settings. And we're good. We're using all of the default settings. That's exactly what we're looking for. And we'll choose loft. And now that lofts my surface and I'm going to switch to a shaded mode so we can see it a little better. We'll just hit five on the keyboard. Now we get a pretty decent looking object, but I want to go back in and make some alterations. So if I try to click, I'm going to select that surface a lot. So I'm going to turn off the surface selection so that I can't select it. And that we can just grab my curves and modify those to shape this surface up. And it's a little too wide, so I'm going to scale these in. There we go. It's a little better. Make it a little thinner in this direction. Overall, that works pretty nicely. We could probably pull that bottom curve maybe down just a little bit. And let's scale the neck there. Let's bring that in a little tighter. And we could probably bring the top in a little tighter. We'll just bring it in the X. There we go. I like that. Now we can also go into a component mode and just grab single CVs and push and pull these. This will make our wrinkles a little bit more prominent. And we don't need to leave them planar. We can actually pull them up or bring them down. So long as we're not crossing over other curves or getting too crazy with them, we can make a lot of adjustments. And all this being done through the history of that loft. Okay, I think that works pretty good. I'm gonna switch back to object mode. And now I wanna select my surface, so I'll turn that selection mask off and select it. And in the channel box, I'm gonna choose the loft one node and scroll down. And if I want to add more geometry to this, I can. Now I can't add it directly in this direction, in the direction that my curves have created for me. But we can do it in the opposite direction, which is going around, basically kind of adding curves to it. We can change our section spans, and I'm going to up that to two, giving me a little bit more geometry in there giving me a nicer surface. Now we cannot close this surface, unfortunately. NURBS surfaces, remember, must have four sides. So if we try to close that bottom there, it's going to loop back up to the top, okay, in order for it to try to close properly. So instead we just cheat. Let's turn that selection mask back on for the geometry so I can select my curve easily. And we'll just scale that down. And we could even just set it to zero if we wanted to. And that creates a nice tight hole there for us. Perfect. There is our sack. 
And that concludes our movie on the lofting tool.